Sonic, the heart of your system. Brownie here from Kit Guru, and in this video I've got something a little bit different for you. It's not a review, it's not a sponsored video. Uh, I just got sent this keyboard to give a little bit of feedback on and uh, while I was trying it out I thought that the tech behind it was really really cool. Uh, so I basically wanted to show you guys and sort of tell you a bit about it um, and also get some feedback on what uh, other sort of gamers think about the tech. So. If you remember all the way back when I went to Computex, uh, on the Cooler Master stand I was checking out the new peripherals and one keyboard that really caught my eye was the MK851 and it had this thing called Aimpad technology which I thought was brand new. Um, it's basically a pressure sensitive technology that means that the keyboard can detect how far you're pushing a key down. Um, and obviously that's really good for gamers because it gives you more control because it can pick up the same sort of accuracy as if you were using the joystick on a controller. And uh, like I said, I thought it was brand new technology. I didn't know it existed. I didn't know about any keyboards that had it on already. Um, and it turns out a keyboard already exists. <laughs> it is the Wooting One. Uh, it's sort of a very unassuming keyboard if you look at it. Um, and it was like a Kickstarter project, so it's obviously not a big company. It's not a company that I've heard of before. And I think maybe uh, not many people know about it. Like I definitely did not know about it until it sort of arrived on my doorstep. Um, and what's really cool about it is it has that same sort of, uh, it's not called aimpad technology, it's basically analog technology. Um, and that's what allows the keyboard to detect how far you're pushing the keys down. Um, but with this Wooting One, it works across all of the keys. It's not just that sort of like gamer WASAD area, it's across all of the keys have the same analog tech. Um, this one is the Wooting One, so it is a 10 keyless version that's on the market right now. I think it's about 140, 150 pounds. Uh, so it's not cheap, but it's not that expensive either because I mean that Cool Master keyboard was like over 200 pounds. So uh, yeah, quite a bit of a price difference there. Uh, they are bringing out a Wooting 2 as well. That one's coming in November, December time. So that is about the same time that Cooler Master keyboard is coming out. And that is a full size keyboard, not just 10 keyless. I think they've made a few other improvements as well. Um, but yeah, this isn't a keyboard review anyway. It's me just sort of uh, showing off the tech. So yeah, basically it uses flare tech analog switches. Um, and not only can you remove the keycap, let me get the right end of the tool. <laughs> Uh, the actual switches themselves also come out. So yeah, they're uh, flare tech analog switches. I've got the one with the linear switches, which is basically Cherry MX Reds. Um, and then you also do one that has the tactile quick clicky switches. They're called blues. So yeah, basically Cherry MX Blues. And you can like hot switch between them, which I thought was quite cool because if you have like a problem with a key, like maybe it's died for some reason. I mean, they should last forever anyway because they're mechanical switches. Um, or you can like switch out certain areas on your keyboard. So maybe you want the WASD area to be linear, but you want the rest of the keyboard to be tactile and clicky. And you can do that with this keyboard. There's no soldering required, which I thought was quite cool. Um, but yeah, the main thing is that they are analog switches. So you can, um, they can detect the pressure that you're pushing onto a key. So um, yeah, obviously it gives you controller joystick sort of uh, controllability so you can like increase your walking pace um, or if you're playing a game like Rocket League, which is a game that I find it works really well with, um, it sort of lets you accelerate and de decelerate and also sort of change the wheel, like which way you're going more gradually rather than just like on and off. Um, the actuation point on this keys is also adjustable using the software. Now, I thought this was super cool because <laughs> uh, normally when you buy a mechanical keyboard, like obviously when you select the switches, that's the actuation point you get. Like they are creating more switches now for gamers. So you have got the uh, Cherry MX Speed switches, which obviously have quite a high actuation point. Uh, whereas with this keyboard, you can set a higher actuation point, so 1.5 millimeters for gaming. And then if you're going to do a lot of typing, you can then lower the actuation point down to 2.5 millimeters. And it's all done using the software, uh, which I think is just, yeah, really cool. It's a really cool feature of having an analog keyboard is that it, you don't have to decide basically what switches you want. You just go linear, clicky, um, and then you can make your own actuation point, which, yeah, I just thought was really cool. 
Uh, another cool thing you can do is have two actuation points on a single keystroke. Uh, so games that that's going to work with is like something like League of Legends where you have like a normal cast and then you also have quick cast but rather than turning that setting like on and off you can actually have it so you've got almost both settings at the same time so gently press the key to normal cast and then sort of like smash the key down and it'll quick cast and um, I haven't actually tried that out because I think it takes a little bit of setting up but uh, yeah, it looks really cool anyway. They have like a quick demo on their website. Um, and I thought that was another cool feature for gamers. I just think overall this tech is really bringing like gaming keyboards forward because obviously we're all using mechanical keyboards at the moment um, and they've got like speed switches and things, but they're, and I think Razer's got like debounce technology, but this really seems like a feature for gamers um, and obviously quite a small company doing at the moment cool masters doing something maybe we'll see like corsair razor asus like those brands that create like gaming peripherals maybe they'll pick up this tech and put it on their keyboards as well so maybe this tech will become more mainstream more affordable um, and i definitely think that's going to be an advantage for gamers i definitely like it anyway and the cool thing about it is if you don't like it, the keyboard can also be used in digital mode, which is what I've got it in at the moment. So it just works like a normal keyboard. Uh, so to demo the software to the best of ability, I'm gonna jump into Rocket League uh, and then I can just sort of show you how the movement looks in a game. So I've now opened up Rocket League and at the moment you can see that I'm using the keyboard in digital mode. So when I press the D key, the wheels turn all the way to the right. There is no um, graduated sort of movement. But if I turn on the uh, analog mode, so on this keyboard it's function and the mode button, and then you press it down to turn on like the cars and balls, which is obviously made for Rocket League. They've also got a profile that's set up for FPS shooters, although the ones that I try, which is Far Cry, Cry Far Cry 5 and CSGO couldn't actually get that one to work. It didn't seem to do anything for me. I think it requires like a bit more setting up maybe, or maybe it's just not set up for those games because the one they do demo is PUBG, which I don't currently have downloaded because my internet is a potato. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, onto the keyboard. So that mode's now on, it's lit up green, it's ready for Rocket League. So if I now press that D key again, you'll see like as I gradually press it lightly, 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 and then harder, the wheels like turn gradually. So uh, I'll do it with the A key, gradually, gradually, and then a bit harder. It's not perfect. I do notice that it does have like a little bit of a dead zone, um, but the the Gradual movement is definitely that, and I do think it gives more control. It works the same with like the acceleration as well, so you can sort of move slowly, or you can move it faster, and then you can mash it all the way down. Um, it is really quite cool tech, and I definitely think it's gonna be advantageous for people that are more used to using a keyboard, but they wanna get the um, sort of controller controllability <laughs> when you're playing games that feature cars and things so um yeah i just thought it was cool tech i wanted to show it to you guys uh it's not really a review of the keyboard i mean the keyboard is is nice enough um but yeah i just wanted to show off the tech that it uses basically um like i said it's definitely not perfect but i do think it is really quite cool and i'm hoping that maybe we see more manufacturers doing it and it definitely becomes more mainstream when it comes to the sort of like gaming market because i think it's going to give us like more advantage in games and we don't have to use controllers uh, <laughs> to get sort of like the best experience from car games plane games uh i don't know i'm quite using it like gta and stuff as well <laughs> but yeah super cool tag let me know what you think of it um maybe you think it's overpriced maybe you think it's pointless maybe you just like your mechanical keyboard um or maybe it's something you really like and you uh, maybe want to try it out and buy it for yourself and you want to see more keyboards feature this tech and you hope that it becomes more mainstream. So yeah, if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from Kit Gear, make sure to hit the subscribe button and there's also a bell icon on as well so you can get a notification every time a new video goes live. Mm -hmm.